Will the Fanatic GTDD Pro make you faster? Stay tuned to- <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep doing this bit anymore. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and this is going to be a review of the Fanatic GTDD Pro. The first direct drive wheel made specifically for PlayStation. Eh, eh, the first direct drive wheel officially licensed by Gran Turismo. Yeah, that that that's it. So on Black Friday, 2021, uh, Fnac had announced the um, Gran Turismo direct drive wheel again, the Fnatic GTDD Pro, and. It's kind of a monster because it takes everything that was great about the Xbox and PC specific CSL DD and literally just adds to it. They don't actually take anything off of it. They have the same innards of, you know, the CSL DD. They've got a slightly different uh, outside case for it, but the bundle that was available up through March or something like that, 2022, had a specific wheel that was made for the um, Gran Turismo 7 experience for the GTDD Pro, and as well including the uh, normal CSL pedals. So for the purpose of the review, I'm gonna stick with mainly the wheelbase and the wheel itself. I mean, it does, like I said, include the CSL pedals. Um, I haven't really tried them out in a whole lot. I think there are technically better sensors than the CSL Elite pedals. I just didn't want to change everything out there. So if you're looking for a review of that as well, um, I don't know if I will be reviewing that for a while, so, you know, check out another video. I could put a couple of links in the description for those who are looking for a review of that. So I'm not even going to lie, uh, the price tag is a hard pill to swallow. $700 for a wheelbase, a wheel, and pedals. If you are fortunate uh, enough to be able to afford that and wait long enough to get it, I have nothing but good things to say about it, apart from, again, that overarching price tag. The thing that I struggled a little bit in regards to this wheel was that uh, there wasn't like a standalone wheelbase version of it. So in all honesty, I didn't need to get the bundle. Like, I didn't need the steering wheel. I had many other steering wheels. I didn't need the pedals. I have pedals already. But when they finally did announce the standalone wheelbase, the bundle just makes sense to get because the standalone wheelbase is 600 US dollars and the bundle is 700 and you get a hundred dollar pedal set included with it. So already that's a good deal. But the fact that they add on an entire wheel too makes it like a no brainer deal because it's like, do you want to buy another wheel? Do you want to like use one of your other wheels or do you might as well just basically get a free wheel? Why not? Given all that backstory, let's actually take a look at the wheelbase itself. So like I was saying, it's quite similar in styling to the CSL DD wheelbase. However, in this case, it's it's more emphasizing on the roundness portion of it. Um, and on the back side of it as well, it's got a much better layout, in my opinion, than what the CSL DD had for like being able to connect things up and plug things and whatnot. Um, but from that, I mean, Really, there's not a whole lot of difference. I want to say that the, the CSL DD had kind of like a gloss paint where it was nice and smooth, and it's kind of weird having a wheelbase that's into like this flat matte paint. Like, I, I personally don't like the feel of it. Like, I've never enjoyed the feel of a flat matte paint, but um, I don't know. It's, it's functional, and you're not touching the wheelbase. What you're touching is the wheel, so I mean, honestly, it really doesn't matter. So much like the CSL DD, you've got these weird little T nuts that you screw into the um, the wheel stand, or, or the wheel, yeah, the stand that in which you put the wheelbase on, and then you can kind of just slide it in. I know many people have talked about how easy it is to install it like that. I've honestly spent a lot of time trying to, you know, maneuver around the wheelbase around the T-nuts because it kept on, like, slipping and turning and stuff like that. I mean, the process of installing it does take a little bit of time, but, it, I mean, if you have a direct drive wheelbase, it honestly should take some extra time. Because if you're just slapping it down on the wheel stand or whatever, like, it's not secure if it takes three minutes. But, I don't know. The extra process, you know, it's secure. I mean, I've got four T-nuts in there, and it is just 
like it is not moving anytime too soon, which is honestly exactly what you need with a direct drive wheelbase. Um, let's focus on the other main part of why you get this wheelbase is also the wheel itself. So the wheel itself is, is quite odd because it's actually rather well laid out. And there's about four extra joysticks that what you'd normally expect because you've got, you know, your um, back triggers kind of on the front. You've got your select and the PlayStation home button. You've got your X circle triangle square and then your normal just kind of funky switch joystick. But then you've got these these four weird kind of other joysticks that have like a green, a red, a blue and a yellow kind of rain around it. And we can kind of show off that in a little bit, but basically in game, there are like a little set of menus off to the bottom right where you can change like brake bias, you can change, you know, the map position, you can change to see like a, kind of a close view if there's anybody around or like a, another kind of weird view of the map itself. And instead of trying to, in the middle of the race, use a single joystick to just kind of pop through each of these menus and, you know, change up the brake bias, but change down the tire pressure, um, rather intuitively, it was brought up. Why don't we just have these individual switches that is like, okay, so green is like brake bias and um, red is like tire pressure or something like that. You can change that on the fly at, you know, your thumbs are already like right here. So being able to like just kind of switch them around a little bit actually just works really well. So of course the other thing too is that there is a little bit of an LCD screen as well as you know a little bit of a rev counter. I love, I don't know why, I just love the little flashing lights and all the rest of it on wheels. I think it's really fun. Um, but to kind of coincide with the fact that you're basically getting this wheel for free in the bundle, the quality is... could be better, I guess. I mean, it, it kind of feels like that you're playing with like a Logitech wheel, which is kind of unfortunate because you are spending so much money on a Fnatic wheelbase. It's just like the, the quality just feels quite in line with like a cheaper Logitech wheel, unfortunately. Like the plastic is pretty, pretty hollow sounding. So it doesn't feel like a, a great quality. I mean, the, the rubber around the wheel at the top actually does save it quite a bit. And the, like the rev counters and stuff like that, it does increase quality that way. Um, but kind of the biggest issue that I had as well was the uh, QR1 light quick release system. So that is included. And of course, you can change it out for something better if you want. But the problem is, is that all over social media, it's primarily in Reddit, it's, it's a lot of people in Reddit have talked about, hey, I got even just the five Newton meter version of the wheelbase. And I hear some weird creaking and cracking. And all of a sudden, I realize that the the QR light uh, quick release is just cracked. And I'm sitting here going like, so this is something that you're including in the product and it's breaking after not even three months of usage. Like that's kind of a huge red flag that honestly should have issued like a recall or something because like if this is how the product is supposed to be made using that QR quick release system and it's breaking with minute use, like what the hell? However, since I've saw that going on all over social media at the same time, I decided to order the um, more higher quality quick release. I've done this with every one of my wheels. I mean, the McLaren wheel was the same way. It included the QR um, light, QR1 light uh, quick release. And immediately after I get a new wheel, I make sure that I order the um, the the stainless steel, the more the more metal one. That is, it's such a really good quality. Like the, I love seeing the CNC, um, you know, just design of it. It is such a gorgeous piece of of engineering, and it's really simple too. But you know, being able to change out the quick release from the QR1 light to this. I mean, it's such a, a huge game changer. The one interesting side of things that I had noticed is that because this wheel is not intended for this natively, uh, the wheel is intended for the QR1 system. So you attach it on and then you rotate it. Um, this here, it's got a little spring, so you have to pull back on it. And because the wheel was designed with the QR1 in mind, they weren't expecting you to pull back on a, a spring or anything. 
So the thing that I have noticed is when you are pulling back on the spring to bring it back, you've got the, the rev light here and it's got like this little overhang here and it kind of jams into your thumb a little bit as you're uh, pulling it back. And it's, it's just really not a comfortable experience. Of course, you're not changing out wheels constantly. Normally you just kind of leave it for a bit and then maybe, you know, after a couple of weeks then you take it off type thing. So it's obvious that it wasn't intended. It really wasn't because this this is really awkward and honestly kind of painful at times. But again, um, you're not doing it often. I imagine that some other wheels kind of have a similar experience, so it's not that um, fanatic just said screw everybody who was getting a QR1 normal like metal version versus you know the light. So I've done a lot of talking. Let's actually get into uh, Gran Turismo 7 and kind of do a couple of races here to let you guys see uh, how the wheel responds with Gran Turismo versus maybe doing a controller. All right, we are in Belgium, particularly on the Spa racetrack here. Playing as the uh, Lamborghini Huracan GT3. I want to say it's the Evo variety here. And we are already having a pretty good time here. Uh, the wheelbase is very responsive, just like the CSL DD. I mean, again, you feel every vibration, like every little bit of, of bump, little bit of loss of grip. I mean, you feel each tire really well. The one thing that I have noticed though is, I think this is more an issue with the, uh, with GT7 or Gran Turismo 7 itself, is that as soon as you hit the rumble strip or fall off the track, I mean, you have like zero vibration. So you know, I, I think that's either an issue with the programming of the game or, or vibration setting or something, I'm not sure. But uh, all in all, the, the wheel and the experience playing Gran Turismo 7 is just, so much better than a controller. I mean, I've I've played a lot with a controller. I've done the majority of the license tests with a controller, but again, there's just like a level of immersion that you just don't get when you're playing on a controller. You don't feel like you're really driving the car. It definitely feels like you're playing a game, but when you've got this whole setup where you're, you know, punching the brakes, downshifting, you're going into the apex, you're pressing down on the gas to exit out of the, the corner, and then lifting off to go into the next one, and you're feeling that understeer, and actually, actually, that situation is oversteer. But I mean, you feel all that. You feel very immersed. You feel very connected, and it's just something really fun. I mean, I just, I can't give enough praise. It's just a really good experience that I could just sit here doing for hours. Um, the wheel itself, like I said, eh, a little bit of a lower quality. But when you're feeling this kind of rubbery area. I mean, you're really not thinking much about it. You're just, it, you're really not worried about, oh, this feels like cheap plastic or whatever. It's, it does its purpose of being a very responsive, um, all right quality wheel. The one thing that I did want to make mention though is something that you do pay attention to a little bit more than that is spinning out. But when you are finally getting up to, you know, getting up to speed and you're going through the gears, I mean, the shifters, I'm kind of, at a love-hate relationship with. I mean, when you look at them normally, I mean, they feel like... <laughs> so, I mean, when you look at them normally, they're very cheap plastic, and for something that you are actively involved in, it's something a little bit sad when... That's one of the most active parts of the wheel, is that you're, you're actively switching gears, and I mean, for the rest of the wheel, you're just kind of rotating it but you're really not pressing a whole lot of the buttons during the race itself. Um, so having this cheap plasticky feel is, uh, eh, not great. But I mean, it should be kind of a better experience than the McLaren GT3 wheel, where you've got kind of that rocker shifter system. I mean, it's all right, and it's, I really hate that clunky, non-satisfying kind of uh, noise or feeling that you get. I mean, the, the, shifters here they are better than that but not by much honestly so one of the other things i was kind of discussing before is that with the wheel you've got these four individual i mean technically five little uh funky switches and you can actively during the race be scrolling through your menus and changing settings and whatnot so the two funky switches on the right side are adjusting particularly brake bias i'm not sure why they 
don't have their own settings, like yellow has its own thing, but um, both of them, you know, changing up or down your brake biases, and then without having to scroll through all your windows and whatnot, over here with the blue switch, you can actually, you know, change your tire pressures up and down a little bit. So scrolling through, scrolling through, eh, I might want to decrease my pressure a little bit, or maybe, you know, let's increase it back a little bit. Eh, I might need a, oh, apparently yellow just does whatever it's set on. And then you go back to red, and, oh, I need to break down by brake bias and put it more front setting. Eh, maybe I'll bring it back to, you know, kind of a rear setting. So being able to switch these two on the fly is, is pretty sweet. And of course, too, like you see with the, the LCD screen and the uh, rev limiter there, um, when you are kind of lowering gears and whatnot, it's kind of like a yellowish orangish color, and then as soon as you... <sighs> but as soon as you need to start switching out of the gear here, it'll change to like a blue color there. And you think that it's, it's kind of an odd color because you would imagine that when you're going up in the gear, you want to change it to reds, reds or something. But in your peripheral, that blue actually kind of is like a really bright white color almost. It's kind of odd how to describe it, but uh, it's definitely telling you, all right, you're actually kind of over your rev. You really need to be changing up gear right about now, please. Like now, why haven't you done it yet? Now. So all in all, would I recommend the Fanatic GT DDD Pro? Um, this is kind of honestly a very difficult question because if the wheelbase was in the price range of the CSL DD, I would have said like minutes ago, just buy it already, just do it, come on, what if, why are you waiting? And that's kind of the issue is that it's the price. I mean, it is basically the same as the CSL DD. So why does Fnatic need, have the feeling to need to actually increase the price almost double and when you're buying the bundle literally double the price of the CSL DD and it's just at this point it's so expensive that they need to reintroduce like a CSL DD 2.5 or something it, they need to have another direct drive wheel that is you know 200 bucks or something because this is getting really insane what they're doing with their prices these days of course they did announce that they are increasing their prices due to the fact that they've been you know in a lot of cases cutting a loss during the pandemic so being able to you know sell these products and get a little bit of money too is you know fair enough you know i i'm not in their shoes and they're struggling financially even though they're doing pretty well off by being so popular i don't know so how i've kind of looked at it before is if you are an individual who has a pc or an xbox and has absolutely zero intention of ever getting a playstation at all period end of statement csl dd is where it's at and i would love to be able to recommend that nowadays but you're going to have to get it off of ebay or secondhand because they're just not fanatics just not making it right now i mean they might be but it's just it's not available for sale and it's really really sad to see that's such a successful product i mean maybe they're already planning on doing a refresh of it i don't know but the fact that you can't get it anymore from them is a little bit sad to see which then leaves us with this um I mean, if you do have a PlayStation or a PC or an Xbox, I mean, what more could you ask for? I mean, it is a perfect wheelbase and wheel combination, actually, for any PC game, for any Xbox game, for any uh, PlayStation game. And it just really brings that level of immersion up to, I mean, it's, it's, you're not going to get your sense or of smell of burnt rubber and whatnot, but I mean, we're basically already there. If you've got a good triple monitor setup or VR system, I mean, the level of immersion is insane. But kind of going back to it, at the end of the day, if, I mean, if you do have $600 burning the hole in your pocket for just the wheelbase and you need a new wheelbase and you already got your wheels, you know, perfect. Um, yeah, go, go for it. I mean, it's couldn't ask for a better system realistically. Um, but if you're getting into sim racing for the first time, don't, don't do Fnatic. Don't do what I did. I spent a lot of money getting all sorts of different wheels in the CSL DD and then actually selling it so I could get this. Um, just, just get a Logitech or a Thrustmaster. I mean, it's so much cheaper and 
like it'll get you 85% of the way there immersion wise. The, you know, the CSL DD and the wheel combo will account for the last 10 to 15%. I mean, but the the law of diminishing returns is really starting to show up after you get, you know, your first wheel into the fanatic system. It's just it's a really hard pill to swallow to get to this setup. So thank you all for watching uh, this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're already doing pretty well so far, up to a whole 42 subscribers. Uh, so please, of course, uh, keep like, commenting, subscribing, sharing, following, doing whatever you guys have been doing. Uh, the growth on this channel has already been pretty, pretty good. So, you know, thank you for everything and uh, continue watching this. You know, again, I can't thank you all for enough for it. So again, thanks so much for watching. Um, and that being said, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.